Okay, so we're going to start and uh, welcome to this um, session on, on positioning. So my name hasn't changed. I'm Bertrand Fréchette from Université Claude Bernard Lyon 1 and IFSTAR in Lyon. And I will talk about uh, positioning and we'll present the challenges associated with this positioning uh, as R1 did this morning for scaling. So positioning for us is to be able to allow the user to change the position of uh, FE, finite element HBM, um, in its environment. And um, for that, we wish to provide the users with uh, both a model. We have seen that it is a simplified model that is, can, can be used interactively. And we also wish to provide the user with tools, so not only one, but a set of tools. So the user can position its model within the Piper tool and environment, so that in the end, uh, it can export it so that the position and uh, the FE model, initial FE model, is transformed towards the desired position. Some quick elements of context. Um, so we've been talking about this uh, user survey we made a while ago. Uh, what appeared essential for the users was to be able to produce uh, driving passengers' positions, some positions found in PMHS, but also perform some parametric studies, so let's say around a given posi position or posture, uh, there were some specific requirements, uh, such as modifying the curvature of the spine, but mainly uh, the focus was on uh, positioning the uh, HBM in the sagittal plane. An interesting point was that for many users, um, more than two-thirds or two-thirds, uh, really they wanted to be able also to apply some quite large uh, changes in posture, for example, for the trunk, to apply more than 50% of range of motion, so quite a bit of flexion. So significant postural changes. So that was three years ago or now. Um, what to expect next? Um, so we know that um, HBMs are not currently used within either uh, procedures or regulatory procedures or uh, ratings or testings. But if we have a look at the EuroNCAP uh, pedestrian testing protocol, uh, where you aim to assess the injury risk um, between uh, a pedestrian and a vehicle bonnet, if we want to be able to reproduce this kind of uh, scenario, we need to uh, have some reproducible HBM positioning, among others, meaning uh, with different operators and different uh, HBMs. So an interesting example on that topic is the coherent project that is led by TU Grass and that, uh, funded, uh, that is funded by Euro and Cap. And they work on methods to make results with different HBM comparable. comparable. And actually, further to this, to uh, deliver procedures to uh, be able to certify different HBMs for the same uh, configuration of impact. So that requires uh, some detailed or well-defined positioning. And uh, just to say that the message is that uh, there, are, there is some work going on on the topic. We expect that there's going to be uh, further next, and uh, we need some tools for this uh, positioning. The challenges are that uh, HBMs are not detailed dummy models. They include non-robotic joints. So on the left side, you may have uh, the representation of a Thor model with the knee that is modeled as a hinge joint. And on the right side, you have a HBM where the anatomical features are represented, uh, which means that um, there, are, there is some complex sliding and contact uh, interaction. And you can't basically apply a succession of rotations and translation to move segments uh, with regard to one another. Also, surroundings of tissues uh, need to be deformed, and they need to be deformed realistically along. There are several solutions that are possible. FE simulation is one, but um, several other options, such as uh, being able to differentiate between rigid body motion for the bones, for example, dealing separately for the soft tissues. But they generally necessitate some uh, post-processing, uh, such as the penetration, smoothing, um, remeshing of the elements to be able to control the element quality. So FE simulation, on the one hand, really works. And for us, it is, or it was, the current practice. Uh, Pre-simulation was really the main uh, use for HBM positioning for most of the users. Interestingly, for dummy, two-thirds of the user, users uh, would use a positioner to position the dummy. So we'll go back to this later. Philippe presented uh, that, uh, OK, it works, but it also faces specific issues. First one being that FE simulation is time consuming. It will take, in any case, more time to posi position an HBM than it will take to position a dummy model. Also, preview is not possible. And even minor HBM postural changes um, can be difficult, as you may have been experiencing, depending on the segment that you are dealing with. 
Then properties of the HBMs were selected for uh, their responses at high acceleration levels. Uh, it may not be appropriate uh, for physiological motion. Really, we're talking about 1G simulations. And if you're trying to um, input some end conditions or boundary conditions, trying to induce some lateral bending to a femoral, for example, uh, it's going to be really difficult to control uh, the behavior, the global behavior, and what's going to happen uh, in, this, in that respect. This is related to the fact that physiology, such as range of motion, postural preferences, muscular reactions, they do affect the posture, but they are not implemented in the, in the HPM models. So the targets that you define, they will be defined generally mostly implicitly. And uh, we think uh, that in that respect, the single FE simulation approach is quite res restrictive. In the detail from a user's perspective, you have to face or to deal with uh, multiple constraints and targets together, uh, which include a priori knowledge, physiology, uh, geometry specific to a given model, contacts, constraints related to physics. And the difficulty for the user is to be able to know how to weight this possibly incompatible information. Also, targets may be unknown. If we take the uh, example of the spine here, you may know the orientation of the head, you may know the location orientation of the hedge point, but how do you choose the target position for the curvatures, for example? So it's in, again interesting to see that um, users would, for a high amount of them, they would use visual estimation to position an HBM, whereas for a dummy, really you're using either guidelines or you do know the values of the angles that uh, you need to use, and it's a bit different. So that comes and owes to the fact that there is a lack of a priori knowledge. It is not in the HBM again, and that needs to be brought either by or to the user. Finally, from a user's perspective, each model is different, and even if the targets are known, how easy is it to standardize a target position between models? And the underlying question behind this is, uh, what is a reference posture? And this information, again, is not within the HBM. So to summarize, um, the rationale for the positioning part of the tool is that we estimated or we assessed that there was a lot less literature available for positioning than for scaling, that there were several approaches possible, but it was difficult to assess practical performance or reproducibility of any of these approaches. The point is that a single positioning approach may not be possible or, in our opinion, not desirable, and that's why we provide a set of different tools, which are here, that add alternatives to the pre-positioning FE simulation. It's still there, you can still do FE simulation and can be assisted by the Piper tools. But this is from Philippe, it's a nice sentence. Uh, they provide a positioning playground, in particular through the pre-positioning module, because it's quite interactive and you can play with it. Uh, and uh, as already said, with the scaling tools and by adding knowledge, uh, you contribute to build a Piper model which is somehow somewhat independent from any HBM.